brethren, I pray you sing a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples to bind their kings with chains. This honor of all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. First in Peoria where them crackers be. We right here in the ghettos to tell y'all, man, the kingdom of heaven is for y'all. That's right. All right. But y'all gotta get yourselves ready, man. That's right. That's right. Continue. And they shall repair the waste, the waste cities. Right? The, the waste cities, man. Right. Look at the north side. Look at the north side. I'm not, we not gonna be here, but everywhere else, man, they're gonna be replacing these things, man, that they destroyed. Right. Simple as that. But I'm giving you a symbolic, I'm giving you a, a symbolic reference. The north side, look how bad it is that they get to that. They gonna replace it, but somewhere else. Simple as that. Go ahead. The desolations of many generations, right? The desolation of many generations, how they did us, man. Our people is spiritually broken, man. Go ahead. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock. Stand just out, uh, stand and feed your flock. You ain't gotta go outside and feed your animals no more, man. You ain't gonna have to go outside and do nothing if you don't want to. You have your servant and your handmaid do it. That's their job. This is how it's gonna be in the kingdom. You ain't gonna, hey, and if you do wanna go somewhere, man, hey, what they call them things where they carry you? I forgot what uh, they call them. I can't remember the name, man. Yeah, man, you can have one of them. Hey, carry me over there. Hey, and whoever lean to the side, he, he getting put to death. You lean to the side, you get put to death. Hey, if I feel your arms wiggling, you getting put to death. I want a smooth cross. Right. Yeah. Right. Something smooth. I want a smooth cross. Right. Smooth cross, like the brother said, man. Simple as that. All right. So, uh, was that verse seven? Uh, straight down to verse seven. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Right, man. We ain't gonna have to go out to the garden, man, and uh, gather the fruits and the grapes, uh, the, the fruits and the vegetables, the grains. We ain't gonna have to do none of that. They gonna be out there doing it 24 seven. Hey, when you tired, send your son out there. And when he tired, send his son out there. Hey, we, we putting grandpas, sons, babies, we putting everybody to work. Right? It says, and the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, God. and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. And if you look now, they try to say uh, the so-called Hispanics are the aliens. Look at them illegal aliens trying to come into America. But really, Esau is the illegal alien. But they try to uh, change the Bible and twist it and twist these words and not trying to make it seem like everything don't fall on them. I just want to get that out. I saw aliens. All right. You want to keep going? Verse 6. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you in the ministers of your God. Right. Hey, when they call, that's the only thing we're going to be doing. It's the most high God's work, man. That's it. Everything else, man, we're going to have servants and handmaid doing. Simple as that, man. Oh, no, no, that's 6 right now. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles in your glory. Shall ye boast yourself? So we shall re eat the riches of the Gentiles. It's not going to be America, but it's going to be the rest of these countries, man. We're going to go through spoiling the hell out of these places. Right. Taking whatever the hell we want, man. Taking it with us. Simple as that, man. Who the hell don't want that? Who want to stay on 61st? They hold them life and, and left an inheritance of staying on the block more with their children. Uh, it's gonna be clean things we're gonna be taking. Uh -huh. Say it again. It's gonna be clean things, not unclean things. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh -huh. 
get that. Go that right quick, though. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. What's up, brother? You believe in the Bible? Yes, sir. Right, Come so on. what we're talking about right now, we're talking about the kingdom, man. You believe in the kingdom, so how do you think the kingdom is going to be, man? Because, you know, churches, they portray the kingdom as in everybody's going to take a halo and they're going to be raptured up in the sky. Well, what, what else is going to happen, though? Do you know? Honestly, no. I've been doing a little research, though. I'm, I'm just now, uh, like, a couple years into doing research outside of Christianity. Right. Because, you know, I grew up, everybody, you know, not even said everybody grew up Christianity, but I got some young brothers that, that uh, I got some young brothers that, that kind of enlighten me on, you know, the scriptures, like, I was being read to us, we, we were saying, it's just being portrayed to us wrong, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So, so now I'm waking up, you know what I'm saying? That's why I seen over I seen the, the uh, yeah, so I already know what time it is. And then so the brother pulling out, um, going through the scriptures, and he's showing scriptures contrary to what Christianity tells us about how the kingdom of heaven is going to be. Right? The kingdom of heaven is not in, 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 the, in the atmosphere where you got the white babies flying around and they, they shoot uh, the little heart arrows at you right. and they all, they, that's not what it's like. Right. Right, the angels was black, huh? God. They tell you that in Ezekiel chapter one with the angels was black. Right, they tell you that the kingdom, even in the Lord's prayer, is gonna be on earth. So the brother been going through the precepts and he's doing a beautiful job, man. Right. God, so I want to show. I just want to show you a little bit because we can't compare. We can't even imagine what the kingdom gonna look like. Right. But I can get some scriptures to give you a glimpse on how it's gonna be. Uh -huh. Hey, you not gonna bear the figure. Hey, hey. I gotta be to work at seven. There's any Jeez. way I can get with y'all. Yeah, man. we got a like, fire for you. Yeah, I got, that's I got, what I need. Okay, right. okay. That brother's strong. Hey, right. so yeah, get with us, man. We can yeah, show you something. Man, we can grow together, bro. Yeah. No doubt. You ready, huh? Oh, <laughs> okay. That's all. All right. Come on, brother. Hey, so, uh, uh, so get back to the lesson, right? So, uh, read that uh, First Corinthians two and nine, right quick. Nah, that's cool. I was gonna show him, but go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, you trying to grab uh, something? <laughs> This is Toby, chapter 13, verse 16. For, for Jerusalem shall be built with the sapphires and emeralds. Hey, and you know how we go build their kingdoms up? You know, we built up America. Without us, America wouldn't be sick, huh? Uh, right. They gonna help build up Jerusalem. Right. They told you they gonna build up the desolate places that they laid waste. Right, so it's going into that. Read that again. For Jerusalem shall be built up. With sapphires. With sapphires. That's a precious stone. Come on. And emeralds. And another precious stone. Come, Come on. on. And precious stone. Come on. Thy walls and towers and battlements. Hey, our with walls and gold. our towers, our skyscrapers, it, they, they can't even compare to what we going to have. Uh, it ain't going to be bricks and you got a little bit of iron here. No, it's going to be all precious stones and rubies and can't even express how rubies going to be, man. Right, man? It's going to be like, damn, that's a diamond? And a whole building going to be a diamond. Right. Like, damn. The the, and, the, and the sign gonna be signing on him like damn, damn. You can't even look at it. Your eyes gonna be burning. It's, you can't even. You can't even look at it. You might get destroyed walking. You got to be prepared mentally for these kind of things. You walking around. You know how we walk down Riverside and we go. It's a nice day. We going into our Jerusalem. You like damn, nigga. We need shades on walking around here. You know. You know Jake like to walk around and blinged out. Our whole kingdom gonna be blinged out. Reading on. And the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with burl and car carbon. 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 Car carbon. Carbon. Carbuncle. And stones of, of fear. It says our whole streets is going to be paved with precious stones and gold. Right? It's going to be paved with, with all fear. The best gold. The purest gold. You'll be walking down the street, man. You, we might have to walk around our kingdom barefooted. It's so precious. Oh, definitely. You, you can't just walk around, you know, and here your shoes all muddy and you're stepping around. Look, man, you might have to throw up a prayer before you even enter right. into our place. The whole the whole Jerusalem going to be a sanctuary, man. You can't just walk around in here freely, man. It's going to be beautiful. It's more on it, right? Come on, read that. 
and all her streets shall say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And they shall praise him. Hallelujah! And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be God, which have it, which have extolled it forever. And this is just a small glimpse, right? Like the brother said, man, we can't even really give you the whole picture, man. We can't even give you the whole picture, man. We don't got all the pieces to. We can't do it yet. We ain't got enough information on the kingdom, man. But what we do got is something crazy that we still can't even uh, fathom, man. It's gonna be crazy, man. It's gonna be. Hey, and not only are we gonna have them built, we gonna take back what was ours in the first place, man. We gonna have all of that, man. We gonna have all of that, man. The whole world. The whole world, man. It's gonna be beautiful. All right. Gonna be beautiful. The streets gonna be saying hallelujah. Hey, that's what I was trying to get to, man. It tells you that the streets is you hey, that's your question. Could you imagine golden streets? The streets gold. Mm -hmm. No? That's hard to imagine. I said, yeah. You good? What, don't you want that though? It's in the kingdom, man. It's something we have to be doing to get to the kingdom though. Hey, we can't just be smoking and chilling all day. Right. It's a job to be done. Nice. Teach the women to be sober and age. That's right. Teach the men to follow the law, statutes, and commandments, and be a warrior for the Most High God. God. This is what's gonna get us the kingdom. Nice. Pour that at First Corinthians two and nine. Beautiful I precept. I got that in Titus. That's cool. That's cool. That's fire, man. This is First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. Right. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Right, so hey, read it one more time. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Right, so the eyes have not seen the king. Man, ain't nobody seen the kingdom. What it's really actually gonna look like, thing you can do is imagine it through the scriptures. Right. And it says, ear have not heard. You ain't heard everything that's gonna be in the kingdom, man. Everything, you ain't heard it. Go ahead. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Simple as that, man. Which is the kingdom of heaven. You can't fathom. You can't sit here and think about it 24-7. Hey, you can give a brother five years of thinking about what the kingdom gonna look like. Just that. That's his job. And he still ain't gonna, he ain't gonna be correct, man. It ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be nothing close. Right. It ain't gonna be nothing close, man. The kingdom is gonna be so beautiful. But you really believe the most high God is gonna give it to people that does this all the time? Uh -huh. Hell no, nah, man. Hey, you teach against the commandments, you're gonna be called the least in the commandments. You ain't gonna, yeah, uh, so like the least in the uh, kingdom. But hey, simple as that. <laughs> bro, think about this, bro. When we, you know how we save up money and we'll go to like certain places for vacation, you know, they got the beaches. And they got all of these resorts and stuff. God. Think about the whole, our whole kingdom going to be like that, man. Hey, the Bahamas and man, going to uh, Jamaica and looking at that beautiful water, man. All of that stuff ain't going to be compared to the kingdom, man. Right. Simple as that, man. Hey, what they call it whenever you go to a place and you like um, sightsee it. Um, um, Glass, uh, uh, what is it called? I mean, it's, we know museums and stuff, but it's another thing. Um, touring. Yeah, yeah. Touring. or window shopping. Man, that's going to be crazy, man. Buy it <laughs> hey, window shopping because you look at it on the online, but you ain't got the money to go there. That's window shopping. Still, right. as simple as that. And that's all our people do, man. It's window shop. Uh, dream. Yeah, that's man. That's all you our people do. We don't have the resources to even get these things, right. get to these things. Ain't nobody out here saving enough money to go to the Bahamas. Right. Something gonna Esau's system itself to where something is gonna happen. Well, you gotta spend all that bread, man. Right. Somebody gonna go to jail. Uh, rent gonna be due. They gonna try to say that you didn't pay something. Right. Man, all this, this system is set up for it to happen like that, man. And it's called the chaos system. Simple as that. And what that brother gonna do that with that chaos system, he gonna go rob his brother. Hey, what that, he gonna go rob his brother just to get that, man. And that brother worked hard for it. Now everybody's feuding. What is people say in the world, man? They rob Peter to pay Paul. Hey, people really do that. They rob their brother to go, man. Come on, pay off debt. Pay off debt to, to Esau, man. Right. So, uh, after that, we had uh, uh, Matthew six, six nineteen. Kind. This is Matthew chapter six 
Verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, and where thieves break through the seal, break through and steal. Right, so you don't want to lay up tre treasures here. You got your damn 18K, 65 inch TV. They coming in to get that, they see that. You got a stash spot with $100,000 in there. They coming to get that. That's laying up treasures according to this world, man. He already said not to do that because he's going to show you that, hey, everything here passes away because somebody going to come get that. You can save it as long as you want to. You can, Hey, something going to happen to that. Simple as that. Are you seeing? Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Right, how do you do that though? How do you lay up treasures for the kingdom of heaven, man? What you gonna do, hold some stuff like he just told you not to do and wait for the kingdom to come? Nah, man, it's something we supposed to be doing. Hey, what we out here doing, we laying up treasures mm. for, the, for the kingdom. Mm. Hey, we getting spiritual bread right now. Mm. Clocking up, clocking up, clocking up. That's it. We went from one day a week to going, coming out three days a week. Uh, that's it. Hey, we laying up bread, big bread. <laughs> Go ahead. Read that. Uh, Sirach 29 and 11. Con, this is Sirach chapter 29 and verse 11. Lay up thy treasures according to the commandments of the Most High. It says lay up treasures according to the commandments of the Most High. This is how you, you this is how you lay up your treasures. Following the law, statutes, and commandments. Coming out here being a light to the rest of the people. Yeah, we look like fools now till we get into the kingdom. Hey, and we got all the riches. God. We got all the women. Dominion over all the people. God. Come on. God. Go ahead. God. And it shall bring thee more profit than gold. It's going to bring us more profit than gold because gold ain't going to be. Hey, right here they value gold more than anything in the world. To us in the kingdom, gold, gold going to be on the streets. The gold ain't going to be nothing, man. Just like that. Straight like that. Hey, for real though, that's how it's going to be. So lay up your riches according to the commandments of the Most High God. This is how you get the kingdom. Definitely exercising your faith. Get that, matter of fact, because I always got to input that. Go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Say Hebrews 1. 11 and 6. 11 and 6. And 2 Peter 3 and 3. Hebrews 19 and 7. 2 Peter 3 and 3. Got it. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Right. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he, had, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hey, everybody want to be rewarded, man. Right. But the fact of the matter is, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. You have to have faith and believe on him and his own. Like he said, Yahweh Shah said, hey, don't only believe on me. I mean, my father, but believe on me too. That what I'm about to give you for the kingdom. Simple as that. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, you have to believe that this is going to happen. Nah. You have to believe putting things behind you, you're going to get more. What did Paul say? I count it all dumb. Paul had everything he wanted. He was a Pharisee, man. He said, I count it all dumb. Right. Straight like that. He counted all crap, man. Right. All the stuff he had. Because he know it's way more in the kingdom. Simple as that. Uh, uh. Get that. Luke up here. Uh, Luke first. This is Luke chapter 3 and verse 19. But Herod, the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Chapter 19 and verse 17. Right. And he said unto him, Right. Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Hey, how do you be a good servant, man? Being a light to the rest of the world, man. You have to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to be a light to the rest of the world. Or how the hell will we know what righteousness and, and wickedness is? Hey, brother, how do you know what righteousness and wickedness is? How can you tell if we evil people or not? Yeah. Actions? Okay, so a brother do something wicked, 
and say, I did it to feed my, my children. Is he'll kill somebody that has something that he didn't have. And he said, I did it to feed my children. Is he wicked or is he good? Huh? He good? Hell no. Hey, give me that. Uh, Right, get that right quick. So look, I want to show you something right quick. This is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. That's a law. It's people in the Bible that died because they would rather follow the laws than God. You say what? I asked you, I said, if would you call it evil or good if a brother went and killed somebody and took what another brother had that he worked for? And he said, I did it to feed my children. Is that good or is that evil? Huh? That's evil, right? Hey, get this, because it says not, not to kill, right? That's in the law. So that's how we decipher if somebody's good or if they're evil. So this is how the most high God is gonna determine when he come back. Who's following his law that he's coming? He gonna know if you're doing it or not. Simple as that. So what would you call people that's not doing his law that commandments? an abomination. Abomination? Say abomination? Right, so what, 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 do he, what is he going to do with an abomination? He's going to get away with him. Right, so it's something we need to be doing so we won't be an abomination, right? Get Ecclesiastes 4 and 13. Get this right quick. Con, this is Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. Right, woe, woe it means death and destruction. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. That's something we came, hey, cause people do that. They be like, hey man, I did that, I robbed that nigga to, to feed my kids. Hey, you call it, that's calling uh, evil good, man. You can't do that. Right. Hey, it's people, like I said, it's people in the Bible, man, they died hey, in righteousness, being right, man. You'll get a far more greater reward uh, doing that. Get Revelations 2 and 9, let me show you. This is Revelation. 2 and 9. This is Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation. Uh, Con, this is Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the Fear none of the things that you're going to suffer, right? Go ahead. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. So, so he said, fear none of the things which you shall suffer. And then he gives you an example. He says, the devil shall cast you into prison. Let me ask you, brother, who cast us in prison? Who Who's the one doing all the casting in prison? Let's just say that. Huh? Satan? Show me Satan. So how is he doing it? Okay, but he has people. Okay, most high God has children, right? The most, God has children, right? Okay, I get you. All right, so look, listen. God. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Right. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Right. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You got to be faithful unto death, man. If it's going against the law, statutes, and commandments, man, you got to tough it out. Straight like that. And if you don't, hey, you're going to get a harsh punishment, man. Do you know what uh, the Lord is going to do when he returns? Huh? No, I'm just asking you. Do you? Say that again. All right, God, let's get that. Uh, get Isaiah 60, uh, 63 and 1, and then get Isaiah 66. Let's show you what the, the Lord coming to do when he returns. I think it's Jeremiah Because people, the Christian church have painted this image like so-called Jesus is coming back to hand out flowers, and he's giving everybody a halo, and everybody's going to heaven. That's not the case, man. He's coming to, hey, he's coming to do some damage. He coming back mad as hell. For people that's, hey, definitely people that's out here, man, smoking and teaching people against the law of statutes and commandments. <laughs> and stuff like, hey, we teaching a Bible, but they telling us to, hey, but they don't tell their drug dealer that, though. They don't tell their drug dealer, shut the hell up and get off 6-1. Hey, they won't tell the police that. They won't tell the police that, though. That's but they'll tell us that, though. Bring it out. Hey. People think we some Christians, bro. We ain't no Christians. Ain't nobody going to touch us, bro. But at the, at the end of the day, that ain't what we coming out here for. So get that right quick. 
Hey, matter of fact, hold up. Get uh, Proverbs 9 and 13. I want right. to show you something that's in the Bible, bro. Right. I want to show you something. Get uh, Sarah 25, too. Let me show you something, bro. Right, bring it out. 9 and 13. This is Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Right, so it says a foolish woman is clamorous. The word clamorous, bro, it means loud. A foolish woman is loud. She is simple and she don't know nothing, bro. She don't know what we are here doing. We are here teaching the Bible, but we need to shut the hell up and get off 6-1. And let all this wickedness continue to happen. Nah, that ain't what the most high God told us to do. Bring it out. He told us to come out here and teach the Bible, and that's what we're going to do. Be faithful unto death, God. and he will give us a crown of life. God. He don't give a damn who she go get, bro. Simple, straight like that. He didn't leave us in the world for so long for us to be soft and effeminate. He left us in the world because... It, it, it was beneficial to us. God. Hey, I wasn't scared in the world. I'm definitely not going to be scared in this truth. God. Simple as that. So let's get what Yahweh going to do when he returned now. I said 63 and 1. It's Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. Right? Who is Slack? Who so this is, is this? So, Slack, I want to uh, edify you. This is Isaiah. Do you ever heard the prophet Isaiah? Brother. You ever heard of the prophet Isaiah? So the prophet Isaiah is having a vision on the Lord returning, right? So, who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? Right. That like this that is glorious in his apparel. Right. So is he's talking about somebody's coming glorious in their apparel, coming from Basra, Edom. Edom, it's coming. It's talking about coming from a nation of people. Uh -huh. If you look up Edom, Edom is a nation of people. Right. Edom is everywhere. But we know who Yahweh is really coming for. He's coming for Babylon the Great, right? Uh, Which we call America. If you look on this sign right here, Babylon the Great is America, bro. This is the last kingdom before the Israelites rule again. Go ahead. God. That is glorious in his apparel, right? traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, might to save. Right. Who is the only one that's mighty to save? The only begotten son, right? He the only one mighty to save. Go ahead. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments like him that treaded in the wine fat? Right, so he said he came red in his apparel like he was treading in the wine fat. When it says treading in the wine fat, it looked like he was stepping on grapes all day. That's what you're doing with the wine fat. You tread on grapes all day, man, and make wine. And your garment is going to be red as hell. So that's, he's giving a, a, a symbolic uh, vision on how he looks. Go ahead. Time. Verse 3. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. So he like, it ain't nobody with me for what you see. Go ahead. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. He said, I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. Uh -huh. Why is he mad, though? Do you know? All right, go ahead. God. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. Right. And I will stain all my remnant. He said, I will stain all my raiment. Raiment is clothing. He said, I'm going to stain it because I'm going to be slaying the hell out of people. Uh. Hey, it tells you in the scriptures, the Lord is going to come back taller than everybody else. So when he come, hey, he going to be, hey, he going to be stomping people, kicking people. Bro, his sword is going to be dipped in fire, bro. It's just going to be straight. It's going to be straight. Judgment for people, bro. Uh, hey, think of the world, everybody that follows Christianity. You know where Christianity comes from? No, I'm asking you. Rome? Yeah, right. So let me show you where Christianity comes from. But you ain't gonna hear this in church. Right, that's what the, the fact of the matter is, bro. That's why we commanded to come out here and teach. Because you're not gonna hear this in church, man. Hey, it's not one day where we would we stayed in the house because of this uh COVID-19. Hey, they shut the churches down. I thought that's where you're supposed to go when stuff like that happens. Pandemics happen. That's where everybody's supposed to go, right? And stay prayed up and get answers from the pastor. Nah, bro. That's a that's a that's a beat. That should be a clear sign, but it's not. Go ahead. I'll start. This is from Babylon to Timbuktu. I don't know if you ever heard heard of this book. It's called Babylon to Timbuktu. You should try to get this book, man. It has a lot of information in it. Go ahead. Page 128. Whenever the Jews were in Spain, Portugal, or their colonial possessions, right. 
they disguise themselves as Christians right. in outward form, but practice Judaism in secret. Right, because we the real Jews of the Bible. That's what we out here to teach, man. But it says that we practice Christianity out in the open. But when we was when we was amongst ourselves, we practice our real heritage. We think they was beating Kuta Kente for. Kuta Kente is a Hebrew name, bro. They was like, no, your name is Toby. They was beating him because they was beating his heritage from him. We Hebrew Israelites, bro. God's chosen people. You have to understand that, man. You have to believe that, and you have to follow the laws that your commandments. You was given to be a light to the rest of the world. Break it out! But if you being just as wicked as these, these nations, bro, what does that make you? Go ahead. Many of these new Christians knew Christian rights better than the old white Christians. Right, and that's how it always is. When you teach us something, we learn it, and we know it better than the people that, that showed us. Like Greeks, Beta House. Thetas. Oh, did we know that we ruling that now. When you teach us something, we learn it better than they do. They know it. Go ahead. This system was mainly directed against the new Christians, the secret black Jews. Right, so this Christianity was a system that was set up against us. It says this system was mainly directed against the new Christians, the secret black Jews. Do you know that you're a Jew, brother? You do know that you're a Jew? So this was directed, Christianity was directed for you, man. We're not supposed to be following Christianity. Hey, we was called Christianity in a derogatory way, which means a bad way. They looked at us and was like, look, there go those Christians. They didn't, that wasn't nothing good. But now everybody wants to be a Christian, not knowing that they called us that in a derogatory way. Why do you think white boys be calling each other nigga now too? Hey, nigga, they want to say it so bad now. Just like how they want to be Christians now too so bad. That's just how it goes. So continue on that. Con. In another case, a Jewish woman by the name of Elvira, Elvira Del Campo was indicted and tortured for two years in order to elect a confession from her. Right? The so they so look, they tortured this woman for two whole years to get a confession for her. Like I said, this Christianity system was set up, and it's gonna tell us the thing that they tortured her for. Go ahead. The charges against her were not eating pork and putting on clean linen on Saturday. Hey, do you eat pork? You eat pork? Hey, we're not supposed to eat pork. They tortured this woman for two years because she was eating pork. She wasn't eating pork. Hey, it tells you in the scriptures not to eat pork, bro. Right. Hey, we about to get Isaiah 66. The Lord said that's a reason why he going to kill her. Bring that out. Uh, Bring that out right quick. Let me show you. Uh, then we get back to that. 66 and 15. Uh, this, Isaiah, huh? you got this Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind, right? To render his anger and with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Right, and we just read this: what the Lord is gonna come do. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Right. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right. Go ahead. They that sanctify themselves. They that sanctify themselves, praying over these kind of things that he's about to name. Go ahead. And purify themselves in the gardens. Right. Behind one tree, in the midst, eating swine's flesh. Hey, what swine? You know? Uh, let's look it up for him. Just type in swan on Google. You can just type it in on Google what swan is, bro. It'll tell you straight up. Come. The definition on Google is a pig. So swan is a pig, bro. You can, hey, ain't no eating no. Uh, ham hock, bro, pepperonis, bro, marshmallows, <laughs> all that gelatin got pig in it, bro. We're not supposed to be eating this stuff, bro. But the, because the Lord said He's gonna do something to these people. Restart from the beginning of that verse. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh. So if you eating a pig, he gonna consume you, bro. He already said it. Go ahead. And the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Right, saith the Lord. You're gonna be you're gonna be put to death for eating these things, bro. Right. Simple as that. So when they go back to this Christianity system, they was forcing us to do this. Go ahead. Con. The charges against her were not eating pork and putting on clean linen on Saturdays. Because she knew the Lord would put her to death if she ate it. So she would rather fall into the hands of the most high God than the hands of men. Straight like that. Go ahead. 
According to this woman, these charges were not heretical practices. Right. She wanted to be clean, and pork made her sick. Right, because we're supposed to be clean on the Sabbath too. You're supposed to take a, a, a shower before Friday, before the sun go down on Friday. You're supposed to take a shower. You're supposed to be clean Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. You're supposed to be clean. You cannot be dirty on the Sabbath. And you're not supposed to do any work buying or selling either. Man. Get Sabbath. out! Most high God gonna put you to death for this, bro. Hey, you don't have to believe us. It's in the Bible. Uh, People just overlook this stuff like it's not right there. All right. Let me show you. Get, uh, Exodus 32 and 5, bro. I'm telling you, bro, you get caught lacking doing these things. It ain't gonna be no, oh, I didn't know, bro. The most high God is not trying to hear that. You have years in your life for a reason. He, he you go from one year, two years to to learn who he is. It's not just to do whatever the hell you want. You have a whole life ahead of you to learn who the Most High God is. So it ain't no excuses for anyone. Go ahead. 32 and 5. Where's the mic? Nah, uh, 35 and 2. Yeah, we got it. Gosh, this is Exodus chapter 35, verse 2. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of the rest to the Lord. Right, so it says six days you got to do work. Six days, man, that's more than enough. Hey, but on the Sabbath, bro, you can't do none of that, bro. Simple as that. You're supposed to rest on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. We all know Sunday is the first day of the week. They don't even got jobs open on Sunday. So we know that's the first day of the week. Go ahead. Let's see what happened if you do. Go ahead. Whosoever the work they're in. Shall be put to death. Shall be what? Shall be put to death. Bro, you're going to get put to death, and it might not be right now. But when that time comes, when it's time to get put to death, it ain't going to be no, oh, Lord, if you save me out of this, I promise I won't never do it again. Nah, bro. That's why a lot of people die now doing that. Because they never did what the Most High God told them to in the first place. Uh, now, let's go back to this. God. These Jews had to maintain a Christian disguise, and particularly... So in the presence of white people. In the presence of who? White, white people. people. Simple as that. Uh, so we know these are the people that was oppressing us and they still oppressing us to this day. Go ahead. Any European could have been an agent of the Inquisition. Right, the agent of the investigation. Like when in black churches, you will see, you usually see, you will see a white dude just sitting there, just stirring, looking at everybody, making sure everybody's going according to Christianity. Uh, not according to the law, statutes, and commandments. <laughs> Going according to Christianity, straight like that, man. Matter of fact, read that. <laughs> it is certain that many black Jews of Portugal, Santum, and Angola, who became victims of the Inquisition and Portuguese persecution, were sold in the slave trade. This Atlantic slave trade was lasted more than 400 years from 1444 to about 1880 in some parts of south america right so if you was caught doing doing these practices because you got to understand the people everybody that was in slavery wasn't under channel slavery like how we was some people was just put in and say they let them do their thing be their family and all that and they just come raping for their resources it, but if you that in that situation if you get caught doing that bro you was you was sold into slavery simple as that so, uh, so at the end of the day, bro, I want to give you this flyer, bro. So at the end of the day, man, we got to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments, and you got to exercise your faith, man. Simple as that. If not, you're going to be consumed by the Lord when he returns. Hey, remember, bro, we got a job to do, bro. <laughs> All right. So back to the lesson, man. If you want the kingdom, man, there's something we need to be doing, man. Simple as that. You can't be out here playing games, man. Trying to sell drugs to your people, man. Smoking. Doing all this wickedness, man. Half-assing. Thinking that you can do the world Lord's work when you want to. All these different things, man. The Most High God, it calls that lukewarm, and He's not dealing with these kind of people. Uh, Go ahead. 17. Uh, not, uh, 19 to 17. Uh, 17. 17. Okay, kind. This is Luke chapter 19 and verse 17. And He said unto him, 
well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little thing, have thou authority over ten cities. Right, so this is the servant that he was doing what he was supposed to do, man. He was going out there being a light to the rest of the world, doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Doing the law, statutes, and commandments, and the faith, and teaching so. Hey, the most high, the Lord made him a ruler over ten cities, man. And this is how it's going to be in the kingdom. Hey, he going to make you a ruler over something. And, hey, and that's what we all want, man. Everybody want rest. All the Israelites, I'm going to say. We need rest, man. All right. We need it, man. Simple as that. So uh, from there, let's get the, uh, what else I have? You got Second Peter. Daniel 7, 18. Come on, come on. <laughs> you want, you want? Nah, you want. This is 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right, so that's what we're looking forward to, man, a new heaven and a new earth. We get tired of this damn kingdom and all this unrighteous judgment, God. wickedness. We tired of it, man. Simple as that. So let's get uh, Isaiah 2 and start at 1. God. This is Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And this shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Right, so the Most High God, this is where the Most High God is going to put the Israelites on top of everything, everybody else. Go ahead. And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. All nations going to flow into the Israelites in that day, man. Everybody going to come to us when it comes to the lost that you command. They going to go to these wicked ass pastors if they can't even get to in a pandemic. <laughs> Simple as that, man. They going to be coming to the Israelites for this information. Learning how to please the Most High God. Because they going to have to. Hey, they got to be subject. Hey, the Most High God want everybody serving him. Simple as that. Not just the Israelites. But we the ones that were set up to put Put them in subjection. Simple as that. So everybody's going to come flowing to the Israelites in that day. Go ahead. Verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. Right. And he will walk in his paths. It's like paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Right, so this is, everybody's going to come to us want to know how to do the law, how to please, like I said, how to please the Most High God, man. Simple as that, man. It ain't going to be no, uh, they over here living like Sodom and Gomorrah. Hell no, nah, because we going to send, hey, we going to go over there and set all of that straight, man. <laughs> hey, the world is going to be in straight righteousness, bro. God. It ain't going to be that y'all got your own laws over there, y'all got your own laws over there. No, hell no. Everybody going off the law that you commandment that the Most High God gave the Israelites to give to the rest of the world. Ah, Simple as that. Ah. So let's get that right quick. Um, Matthew 19. This is Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right, so this is a this is a symbolic for the people that want to go to the kingdom of heaven, man. Hey, don't y'all brothers want to go to the kingdom? Do y'all believe in the Bible? You say what? Muslim. You Muslim? What does it mean to be Muslim? You don't like white people. You don't like white people? That's it? That's it? Okay. Go ahead. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Right, which is the Father. Go ahead. That is God. Right. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Right, if you want the kingdom, man. If you want the kingdom of God, Yahweh Shah said out his own mouth. The Lord said out his own mouth, man. You got to keep the commandments. You got to have faith that the commandments is going to get you the kingdom. Simple as that. Go ahead. God, this is Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And when he was going forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what should I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. This is 
Just first. Sorry. So it's just a, pre a precept to what he brought out. He, uh, somebody came kneeling to him and said, "What may I do uh, that I have eternal life?" And he called him good. And he said, "There's only, there's only one good. That is the Father. But do these commandments, and you're gonna receive eternal life." And he only named off uh, a select few of commandments. But we know we gotta keep them all in righteousness. But he just gave him a few to keep, uh, just to let him know. Right. So, and that's I'm glad he brought that out because that's what I was gonna get next is. A couple of things that's not gonna get you in the kingdom of God. God. So if you're doing these things, you need to repent like immediately. You need to repent, and we need to get what repentance is. Can you get that on the right way? Just for edification. We're gonna get what repentance is, man. Because people think it's just confessing. And get first John 1 and 9. So uh let's get a couple things on what it what, what's not gonna get you in the kingdom. Go ahead. This is first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicator, right? nor idolaters. Right? We nor, all know what that fornicator is and idolatry. Go ahead. Nor adulterers. We all know what adultery is. Go ahead. Nor effeminate. Effeminate. A man that's acting effeminate, man. Like brothers, like you step on a brother's shoe, that's effeminate. He's ready to blow your head off. That's effeminate. You getting if, uh, offended off every word a brother say, like that girl that walked by. In the world, I would have got offended at that. Hey, I would have got offended and tried to do something. Because I would have figured, I would have thought I had to protect myself. I would have thought, I'm not about to let no woman talk to me like that. In the world, I would have did that. But that's effeminate, man. Go ahead. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. All right, go ahead. Nor thieves, right? Nor covetous, right? Nor drunkards, right? Nor revilers, right? Nor extortioners, right? Shall inherit the kingdom of God, right? You're not gonna inherit the kingdom of the Most High God if you're doing these things, man. Simple as that. All right, so simple as that. So let's get some more. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 19. This is Galatians. Chapter 5 and verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Right, so you're not getting to the kingdom if you're a fleshly person. Mortal, carnal. You're not getting to the kingdom, man. So that, this is more on what you're not going to get into the kingdom for. Go ahead. Adultery. Right. Fornication. Right. Uncleanness. Right. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is being a pervert. You're not getting to the kingdom being a pervert. Go ahead. Idolatry. Idolatry. Idolatry? Witchcraft. Witchcraft, you're not going and doing, working with voodoo. You're not getting to the kingdom doing that. Go ahead. Hatred. Hatred. Variance. Variance is always trying to be different from your brothers. You're not getting to the kingdom doing that. But I can do my own thing. I'm going to be over here, but I, I know what y'all, I'm with y'all brothers, but I, I ain't got, I ain't about to be uh, with that. Go ahead. Emulation. Emulation is uh trying to be uh greater than your brother. You just looking at your brother and saying, I need to be greater than that. Right. Instead of y'all uh, breaking bread together and y'all being on one accord. Because first, uh, I think it's first Corinthians, it tells you to speak the same thing and be the same right. as judgment. Simple as that. Go ahead. Wrath. Wrath. Strife. Strife. Sedition. Sedition is rebellion. Not doing what the law of statute of commandments tell you to do. Go ahead. Heresies. Heresies is blasphemy. Like we had uh, two people out here recently talking about that they the father go ahead envy envying we know what that is murderers right drunkenness right Rebell Re rebelling rebelling rebellion is always like to party because we know the israelites that's all they do man is they like to party 24 7. the most high god ain't with that let's see what it says after that go ahead and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Right, you're not getting the kingdom doing that, man. And he told you before in 1 Corinthians, you're not getting the kingdom doing these things. Simple as that. All right. What I, what's I, uh, so let's get what, like I said, man, you need to be repenting from these things if you are doing that. So get that right quick. And it's on the van. That's real quick. I think it's 495. Um, the definition of repentance it says that divinely wrought conviction of sin in the heart, that the soul is guilty before God. Right, so this is without any laws or anything. When somebody do something bad, it's in their essence to tell them, man, I probably shouldn't have did that. 
and then you go look to see if it's wrong or if it's right. Go ahead. God. And a resolute turning away from sin is which the sinner identifies himself with the gracious act of God and redeeming him. Right. Repentance involves both a change of mind about sin. Right. A change of mind about sin. And a change of heart attitude <laughs> towards sin. So it's not just confessing and saying I need to change this when it comes to the mind. Like how the Christians do. It says also what? Also. It's like it. A resolute. It's like it's like it. That is for God. Repentance involves both the change of mind about sin right. and a change of heart towards sin. Right, so the change of heart towards sin, man, actually changing. Actually coming out of that sin that we just that we just uh brought forth in 1 Corinthians 6 and in uh, Galatians 5 and 19. Yeah, we only did that. That's gonna be the last scripture that we're gonna look at. Alright, so uh first John 1 and 9. This is First John chapter nine. It's like First John chapter one verse nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us, to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right. So, so read that one more time. It's like if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. Our sin like we and just, to cleanse us. Like we just read in the Zonder fan. You gotta confess, man, but that's not the only thing we're supposed to be doing. But what this is talking about is don't be hiding your sin. Mm. You can't hide your sin and think you're gonna prosper. It tells you that in Proverbs. You're not gonna prosper if you hide your sin. And it's, it's not talking about prospering the world, it's talking about what the most high God is. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Read verse 10. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right? You want to read God? If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Right, so you need to be repenting on a daily basis, man. Uh, and if you say you ain't got no sin, you make the Most High God a liar. Because uh, the Most High God already said, all y'all sinners before me. Uh, hey, ain't nobody, that's why Yahweh even said, even though Yahweh didn't commit no sin, he was like, ain't nobody good but one. And that's the uh, Father. Uh, Simple as that. <laughs> Bring it out, huh? So, uh. Uh, yeah, that's it on that. So, uh, from there, let's get, uh, right, let's see. <laughs> uh, what else you have? Oh, that's, uh, uh, Psalm 30, 25. And then we're going to get that, and then Psalm 19, 7. And then, uh, okay. Psalm 30, 25. Chapter 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Right. And my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Right. So this is the beginning of processes. This is a count on King David. King David said, hey, I confess my transgressions. They ever before you. I can't hide it anyways. So this is what everybody need to be doing. But not only that, man, they need to be following the law, touch the commandments. It even tells you that uh, arms take away sin. Hey, you get with brothers, man, that know the Bible, man, and they'll show you how to get rid of uh, sins, man. These are miracles that brothers is doing also, showing people how to get rid of sin. Uh, get that, that Acts uh, 3 and 19, and then get Psalm 197, and we're going to pass it on. This is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Exactly. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Right, so it says, repent ye therefore and be converted. Be converted to what? Get that? Hey, and we always bring this out because this is a beautiful scripture and a precept to go with it, man, to show you how to repent. This is Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Right. The Lord, the Lord is perfect, right. converting the soul. Right. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. Right, so that's what you convert. At the end of the day, you're converting your soul. Your soul has subjection over your flesh. We all know the flesh is subject to sin, but you got to do it the best way you can, man. That's why Paul said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome uh, evil with good. Simple as that, man. You got to have that flesh in subjection the best way you can. Convert your soul. Always be thinking on the law, statutes, and commandments 
being occupied in prophecy. All right, so uh, go back to the uh, Acts 3 and 19. God. This is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Right. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Be converted to the law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins, this is how you blot out your sins, man. Simple as that. Go ahead. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Right. When the Lord return, man, you better be working on blotting out that. And you better hope his blood is going to cover the rest of it. Simple as that. Right. You can't be out here being no damn nigga and thinking you're going to be saved, man. Because that's not happening. What's up, bro? You all right? What's up, everybody? So simple as that, man. It's something we need to be doing these last days if you want the kingdom, man. It's only if you want the kingdom. You can't be out here being no damn grown-ass fool, man. For real, man. This ain't no damn game, man. People be playing around, man, acting like this is a game and it's not. Hey, man, for real, simple as that. You believe in the Bible, brother? All right, cool. Can you talk, you want to holler us for a second? Hey, uh, Martin. <laughs> Y'all want to talk to us? <laughs> you believe in the Bible, though, right? That's what we're talking about. Hey, when you believe in something, you're going to show that you believe in it, right? Right? So you say you don't believe in the you believe in the Bible, right? So what we out here doing, bro? We teaching that the blacks, Hispanics, and uh, the blacks, the Hispanics, and Native Indians are the Israelites according to the Bible. Make it Have out. You ever heard that you an Israelite? I can't hear you. You say you Muslim? Okay. So what is what is Muslim about? What is Muhammad about? Tell me something about being a Muslim. I don't know. I know. You say what? Well, you know that Muhammad put in the Bible, in his by his Bible, you know that the Most High God had favor to the Israelites. You say what? Ah, nigga, stop. Hey, man, this is why the Most High God told us to come out to the highways and byways, man. You can't be no Old Testament. Hey, these Old Testament Israelites that's in the crib ain't going out to the highways and byways, man. This is a clear sign, man. We know y'all niggas is going off because this we need to be out here where our people is, and these people don't know what the hell is going on. For real, For real, man. They don't know how to get to the kingdom. They don't even know what the kingdom go, man. They have no idea, man, in these last days. So, uh, I got some more. So let's get uh, a couple more things on uh, the things that you're not going to, uh, you're not going to make it to the kingdom as you do. Revelation 21. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 21 and verse 7. Right? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Right? If you overcome, you're going to inherit all things, which is the kingdom of heaven, man. Everything you want in the kingdom. Hey, it ain't nothing. Think of, look at all the stuff the Most High God gave to this carnal world. He's going to give you more in the kingdom. He said you're going to inherit all things. Anything you want, anything your mind can fathom, you're going to want. But it's got to be in righteousness. That's the whole point of you. Converting yourself first. Go ahead. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Right. But the fearful and unbelieving. Right, so fearful and unbelieving, you got to show that you believe in the Bible. You can't just say, I believe. And fearful, you can't be afraid, man, to, to put your, to stand in your rightful lot, man. You cannot be afraid to, to profess the Lord's name and uh, profess that you are Israelite according to the Bible. Because that's what the nations don't want you to do. And you know, and the Yahweh already said they're going to put us to death for this. But you can't be fearful. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. So he said, but the fearful and unbelieving, and what else? And the abominable. Right? And murderers. And murderers. And whoremongers. And whoremongers. And sorcerers. Right? And idolaters. Right? And all liars. And all liars. I have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Which is the second death, man. You doing these things, you're going in a lake of fire. Simple as that. Simple as that. So let's get uh 
Get y'all back. So, and this is for like a lot of people like, before the kingdom come, man. Your Howard shot is gonna separate the sheep from the goat, man. The people that's getting into the kingdom and the people that's not getting into the kingdom. Simple as that, man. This is for everybody that think that everybody's going to the kingdom. Go ahead. This is Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Right? Because he came as a lamb at first, now he's coming to the Lion of Judah. He's coming to profess what is his. He coming to take what is his. This ain't Esau's king. This ain't Esau's planet. This is the Lord and his father's planet. Go ahead. God. And before him shall he gather all nations. Right. And he shall separate them one from another. Right. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Right. So he's going to separate all the nations. You know, because you got some brothers that think that they this, but they not because of all the mixing that happened according to Babylon the Great, man. He's going to separate all nations, but he also going to separate the wheat from the tear, which is the uh, the, the Israelites, that the uh, chocolate-covered Edom, uh, Edomites that we be seeing, all these different brothers, and the ones that did not do what the hell they're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So continue. <laughs> And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, right. but the goat on the left. Right. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hey, this kingdom was always prepared for you. It was already ready. It's already ready. That's why he tells you also the kingdom of heaven is within you. Because hey, that's what he's waiting on for you to get right. The kingdom are already ready. You just gotta get yourself right. Simple as that, man. Go ahead. For all his hunger, and ye, what? And ye gave me meat. Right. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Right. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. Right. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when so hey, it says the righteous shall answer him, not the wicked. Go ahead. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Right, go ahead. Or when saw we sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Right, so the point, the fact of the matter is, we're supposed to be doing this work, feeding, feeding the people, healing the people, uh, uh, buying up the bro part. We're supposed to be doing we're supposed to be doing all these things for our people, man. And you can only do that if you're out there doing the work on the highways and byways, man. Simple as that. And once our God said, he gonna, he gonna say to the uh, the people that's uh, the righteous that's on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, the kingdom of heaven, which was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You gotta be out here doing this work first. You ain't about to get into the kingdom thinking you just sitting around in the crib eating hot Cheetos, playing video games all damn day. Cause that ain't happening. There's work to be done. You got to make your body a living sacrifice. Simple as that. All right, go ahead. I think that's it on it. Uh, so. I This is Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and, pa and palms in their hands. Right, so, it's talking about... This is Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. 
After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. Right, it's a great multitude of the people that's going to get into the kingdom. All right, uh, beside the 144K, this is that great multitude. Go ahead. Of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, right? stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, both with white robes, and palms in their hands. Right, so it says it's going to be a great multitude. It didn't say it's going to be everybody that's making it to the kingdom. A lot of people are going to die, man. Simple as that. You got to be doing this work, man. You got to be doing what your lot is, learning what you, your, your talent is. What your, uh, what is talking about, First Corinthians? You got to figure out what your, uh, your gift is. So, yeah, come on. You got to find out what your gift is, man. Everybody has different gifts. You got to find out what your gift is and use it to the best of your ability, being a vessel for the Most High God. Right? Simple as that. Check it out, Doc. All right, so uh, uh, let's get this, this last one. Second Ezra 2 and 41, because I know you're about to shut it down anyway. Second Ezra 2 and 41. And this is something we all want to be, man. Everybody wants to be crowned by the Lord, man. Everybody. Nice. Hey, he's gonna he's gonna crown a couple people, man. He ain't gonna crown everybody, he's gonna crown a couple people. This is this is second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 41. Right. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. But cease the power of the Lord. That thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. And I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people, right? whom I could not number. And this is the people that's doing what the hell they supposed to do. Ex hey, exercising their faith, they faith, following the law, statutes, and commandments. This is that great people he's talking about. All right, get uh, the song Go ahead. Bring it out. And they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, right. taller than all the rest. Right, so it says the Lord is going to be taller than everybody else. Go ahead. And he was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Right, so the Lord is going to be crowning people. Hey, that's your halo. You getting crowned by the Lord. Go ahead. It's not for everybody. God. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? Right. He answered and said unto me. These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. Right, so these is the people that put off being carnal, being mortal, being fleshly, like we just brought out in 1 Corinthians 9 and uh, Galatians 5 and 19 and Revelations 21. Hey, you got to stop doing all that if you want the kingdom. Hey, we know some things take uh, longer than others. Some things take uh, way longer than others. But hey, you got to start your process ASAP. Because if you doing that and you ain't showing no signs that you're trying to stop, bro, you ain't getting the kingdom, bro. Simple as that. Go ahead. God, and have confessed the name of God, now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them? Right, so Ezra's asking what young person is crowning these that's taller than everybody else. Because your yeah, shall look young in the face. Go ahead. And giveth them palms in their hands. Right. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Right. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Stood, stood so stiffly. Hey, we didn't, hey, to be honest, bro, we didn't know what this girl was about to go do. She could have went and got a flock of niggas and came back, but we stand stiffly. That's right. Straight like that, man. Hey, it's a lot of people that hey, went, uh, Oklahoma City, the same thing, man. No, they can go get people, man. They can get people in and come hurt us. The scriptures already said that they was going to do it already. We believe that. They going to do it eventually. Hey, but we got to stand stiffly, be faithful unto death. All right, so let's see what uh, the people that's going to be on the opposing side going to look. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and start at 1. This, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Right. Then shall the righteous man stand. In great boldness before the face of such has afflicted him right and made no account of his labor right these people out here don't make no account of our labors they don't see we come out here even more now they don't really don't give a damn what the girl say she said get the hell off 60 first but like i said she don't tell her drug dealer that she don't tell the police that man i bet you everybody out here want us to get off 61. Bring it out, they tired of here in the bible hey they like being in wicked Okay, okay, I understand it. All right, so you say you love him, and you say you love him, right? 
So can I ask you a question? What are you supposed to be? If you love him, what are we supposed to do to show that we love him? Can we just say we love him? All right, cool. Go ahead. Hey, this is why we need to be heard because people really think that they are following the Lord. They really think they taking their cross, they bearing their cross and walking after him. She said she do her dues every day, man, from sun up to sun up. But got pants on, man. That's crazy. Go ahead. John, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Right? And they, they see the amazement of our salvation, man. Simple as that. Go ahead. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for. Right, because they don't look forward to us being saved, man. They look for us. They think we demons. They think we devils, man. They don't look for us being saved. Hey, they want to hurt us. Go ahead. Verse 3. And they, fuck, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of the spirit shall say right so themselves. it's talking to the, the other people when they see brothers and sisters that was out here teaching doing the law of the commandments being saved they're gonna be ang groaning in anguish of spirit they're gonna be going crazy within themselves saying what this was he whom we had sometimes in derision which is mockery look up the word uh, derision it means mockery ridicule go ahead and a proverb of reproach. Right, calling us all kind of names. Go ahead. God, we fools accounted his life madness. Right, it says we fools accounted his life madness. That's and what they gonna be saying to themselves. We some damn fools. They had Bibles in their hand the whole time. They wouldn't out there to hurt nobody. We ain't out here teaching Christianity. We teaching something from the scriptures. Right. Uh, this whole time we've been out here, man, straight out the Bible. Go ahead. And his end to be without honor. Right. How is he numbered among the children of God? Right. How is he uh, named among the children of God? How is he being crowned by Yahweh? This nigga was doing all kind of wickedness in the world four or five years ago. He was doing all kind of crazy stuff. Now he getting crowned, and they gonna be beating themselves up because they should have been doing what they seen that brother doing. Right. Simple as that. Go ahead. And his luck is among the saints. Right. Therefore, have we erred from the way of the truth and the light of the righteousness. By following Christianity and what these brothers say, how many brothers said they are Muslim? But then I ask them, hey, show me show me uh, what Muhammad about. Show me what being a Muslim about. I don't know. You, you claiming something you don't know. That's just like saying I'm an African American and I ask them how and they can't show me. Why the hell would you why would the hell would you say you something that you don't know what it is? Get out, huh? Right, go ahead. God and the light of the righteousness have not shined unto us. Right. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. Right. We we weary ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Right, because that's all they want to do, man. That's why they told us to get off the block. They want to be left alone so they can do their wickedness. Bring it out, Doc. Right. Simple as that. They want to do what the hell they want to do without being corrected. So they, because they think when they, when they, uh, in front of the Most High God, they're gonna be, they're gonna be able to say they don't, they didn't know. Right. Hell no. That's not how the Most High God works. Everybody has the chance to hear this truth before he, he uh, he cracks that sky open. Right. Everybody. Yeah, we have gone through desert where where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Right, it says we have gone through deserts learning not the way of the Lord. Hey, they they master being wicked. Master how to break in their brother's crib while he ain't there. Master how to hold a pistol without the police. And all this stupid stuff they do out here. They try to master, they go to the desert and beyond to try to master this kind of stuff. Go ahead. What have pride profited us? Or what good have riches with that vaunting brought us? Right. That goes for the, the rich brothers. That's Israelites, man. Them people, hey, we, we looking on the outside, and them people is miserable, man. They miserable as hell, and they gonna say that, man. What have this shit, what does this stuff profit us? Nothing. Because we still don't know the Most High God. Bring it out. Simple as that. Go ahead. God. Uh, all those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post 
that has that has been by. Right. And as a ship that passed them over the waves of the waters, which when it was gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found. Right. So like like a, like when a ship is going through the water, you see where the ship is uh, going or coming from, but after 30 seconds, you don't see it. No. No more, man. Simple as that. Bring it out. Hey, man. This is crazy, man. That's what they, they, they like playing Tom and Jerry with the police, man. Hey, the police like playing Tom and Jerry too, man. Hey, they go, hey. Man, y'all think this again? They smoking y'all on a hot My level. mama fucked the police in down the toilet. Right. 
thou shalt go out one way against them and, and flee seven ways before them, right? And shall be removed into all the kingdom of the earth, right? And on a smaller level, you see the, the police pulling up, and you got Jake scattering seven ways like a roach, right? Even the people who ain't even do it, they still running. Right, and then you got Jake over here at the list, though. They run in and they recording it and say, oh, my mom, all this. Bro, Wally and Madness. Wally. You like that? Right, your whole life is a test. It's not a game. Right, and then the hood, the hood niggas, man, who, who always be on 61st. Man, when do y'all get a Do y'all get tired of this? Y'all get tired of playing these, these, these futile games with the police? And it gets to a point where the police pull up and be like, hey, you know, and he know him by name. Hey, Rashad, man, stay out of trouble. Hey, you own Man, right, the police pull up. Like, you been doing good, Rashad? Right? The hell you want the police to know you by your first name? When he see you, oh, yeah, that's Rashad. They're going Marcus. They're going they're go Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo. Man, why he know you by your first name like that? You know what you're saying? We know your whole family. Why the police know your whole family like that, man? Right, and then you get mad whenever you running from them and you get shot in the back. Right, that's something to be mad about, but at the same time, bro, hey, who gonna pity a charmer? And you playing with the fire and you know the police, you know, across the street, but you, shake, shake my hand, shake my hand, shake my hand. And you, and you, you know, you giving them something. And then you get mad when the police swoop up on you. Who gonna pity the charmer, man? You putting your hand in the fire, man. And man, you're not gonna be able to get away. You see, you got the, the helicopters. They put up like four deep on both sides, man. Hey, even if you do get away once, are you gonna be able to get away every time? No. No. Man. You know, and Jake think he the coldest, man. He think he the best at what he do, man. Don't you know? Nigga, you, this ain't nothing new that you're doing. He's like, yeah, bro, ain't no nigga like doing it like me. Like Hell of niggas did it just like and look everybody got failed. The same result. Right, and yeah. we hey look, and we still in captivity. Uh, 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 we're not doing nothing different, man. I know you got something. Bring it out. This is Sirach chapter 9 and verse 13. Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. Hey man, the police, hey, in America in general, man, this whole judicial system is set up for them. They got power to kill and they don't get in trouble for it. Why is you playing get hey? Don't, it don't we say this in a world, hey, um, hey, be wise in the battles that you fight. Don't go fight any battle. Don't go up an opponent when you know you're going to lose. Ain't that dumb? Why is you playing games with them when you know it ain't no outcome? Re it ain't no possibility for you to win in this system unless you keep the commandments and the faith in your hell while you have a shot. Why is you trying to play? You playing their game. Right? You playing into their hand. You playing into day world, you and they, you know, when you go and play um, like certain sports, you got a strategy and you got a game plan, right? And the opposing team, they got a strategy and a game plan, Con. Uh -huh. Why is you playing into their game? Why is you playing into their game plan and their strategy? Man, you supposed to be going with the most high's plan. Get out, Ock. What did Drake say? God's plan. You supposed to be playing into that one. And the strategy is, to keep the faith in the commandments, God. Uh, That's our strategy. You can't fail. You can't lose. But Jake want to be that Jake. He's like, nah, I'm going to do it different. And watch how, you know. And he pride about it. And he ended up getting destroyed. And he get put, put and he ended up being um, put on a shirt. And everybody say, R.I.P. for a day. Like, they just happened on 51st of Franklin. Hey, the other day, what was this? Last week, somebody got shot right over there by the corner store. And everybody saying R.I.P. Bro, change. Keep the commandments, man. It's not that easy. Bring it up. Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. And if thou come unto him, make no fault. Lest he take away thy life presently. Hey, and it's a, hey, and that's what the police do. They pull up on you. They have license and registration. And you go to grab it. You got a gun. And boom, 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 bang. But none of that would have been happening if you wasn't playing your music on max and you swinging and you got a whole oat under the seat and it smelled like gas. That wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have put yourself, if you wouldn't have played into the hand. Right? We got our own plan. We got our own strategies, man. Right? God gave us the blueprint on how to win the game. 
He showed us how to get the victory. Right? Give me second edgers. But they got more of them pulling up. Undos. Yeah. Give me um, um second second edgers. Seven. This is Second Edges, chapter 7, verse 57. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. He said, this is the condition of the battle. Right, you got all distractions and all hell breaking loose. And you can see it, man. You can feel it. That's the condition of the battle, man. Temptations, trials. This is the condition of the battle, man. Condition, man. It ain't nothing but folly and madness. Right, read that again. He answered these me and said, This is the condition of the battle which men that is born upon the earth shall fight. Right, this the fight you got about. This your battle, man. As soon as you be born, you born into hell. Chaos. Come on. Right. Verse 58. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. He said, but if he be overcome, he shall suffer as the Most High said. Come on. But if he get the victory. But if he get what? The victory. The, who? the, the victory. victory. The victory. But if we get the victory, come on. He shall receive the thing that I say. He said, but if you get the victory, you're going to get the thing which he said. Shalom, I was good. I know tap him up, man. Bro, look, bro, look. Get, um, get Matthew 19, bro. Or 6. It's a 6. Hey, so look. I'm going to be honest with you. We don't like to pray out in the open because we want our prayer to be heard and we want to be sincere. All right, all right. Yeah. Tell me your name again. I remember we used to be over there in Shoreline. Fardo. Fardo. Hey, say less, man. We got the same situation last weekend. They wanted to pray for us. A prayer? Hey, look, bro. Will you pray for him? Yeah, Con. Con. Will you pray for him? You gonna pray for him? You gonna pray for him? Hey, y'all brothers gonna pray for him too? Right. Right. His name? Say your name again. Bardo. Bardo. So look, we're gonna pray for you, but we're gonna do it in our house because we want it to be sincere. Man. We don't like to do it just because, you know, it might seem like we're doing it just because, but we want it to be sincere, man. So Bardo. Hey, text the name in the chat again, like not stop, bro. Yeah, we got you for sure though. Uh, hey man, but hey, for real though. I'm gonna do it this way. Gotta keep the commandments, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, being the Israelite is the best thing going right now. Right. right. You can be over and post it up strong, man. It's the way. It, bro, it literally is the way, man. It's the next big thing, man. Yeah. Tap in with us, bro. You know where we be at. You see us, you see us here. Yeah, I'm tapping in with y'all. All right. Oh, man. Yeah, for real, though. Did you take the chat? Please. I don't know what that brother going through, what demons he battling, but we're going to pray for him. Uh, God? God! God. serious, man. That's what we out here for anyway, man. He came up to us. Right. They see it, man. Now we out here killing him, man. But hey, go back to second edges. Back to second edges. Let's go back to second edges. Man, I'm tired for this damn right. helicopter to be gone. Yeah, starting at 58. God, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. Right, so we in the we in the midst of the battle. Now we in the midst of the war. Right. Right. In war, like the brother said, there's many battles. Right. Right. So you gotta strive to win every battle. Right? And you don't win battles by being weak. They told you in second Ezra, you always pull it out. You gotta put off the weak nature. And you gotta subdue your own understanding, man. You can't be in the battle, we can't be in the midst of war, and we all together, and then you go over here on the side and be like, all right, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight all of these people by myself. That's not how it works. You gotta be in order, right? 
before we even got to the battle and we looking at our enemies eye to eye, face to face, we already had a strategy. We already had a plan. We already got brothers dipped off going to flank them. And you gotta stick to the plan. And the plan of the battle and the war is to keep the commandments and the faith, huh? Right. That's how you win. You're not gonna win by going over there and doing your own thing. You're not gonna win by being contrary to what the general or what, to, or what the most I say. You win by listening. You win by being a team. You win by being a faithful soldier. Right? You, you win by being faithful, man. You win by putting your life on the line for your brother, man, for your nation. You don't win by being weak. You don't win by doing all of this folly and madness. Bring it out, And huh? you in the midst of the war and you over there, you know, you got all the brothers standing strong. They got their shields, they staff. Some brothers got swords, right? Some brothers, you know, in the back with the, some brothers got the arrows and you over there, you know, folly and madness. You over there smoking, cracking shit. You over there running from the enemies. You don't win that way. Look, he, he getting pulled up on, bro, with nowhere to be found. Right, man? That's why you need to be with us, man, because they, they can't wait to get you, man. Come. They can't wait to catch you slipping, man. I can't wait. Man, give me 28, uh, 2863. I know you got some fire. You hold that, hold that. 2863. chapter 28 and look bro our brother probably over there scared man but if you come be with us you wouldn't fear for nothing man. you be with the most high you do good no evil thing man now read that this is yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 66 and thy light shall hang in doubt before thee and thou shalt fear day and night and shalt have none assurance of thy life and brother probably like damn they running up on me and running across the street he probably like damn I should have ran earlier Right, you get to a point where you might not even be guilty of nothing, but you run just in case because they trying to persecute you for any reason. Hey, and that's the tactic that you need to try to run up on them, like, so you can get scared and run. Yeah. Because you know he ain't do nothing. Exactly. Just so they can... Yeah, boom, so, boom, boom, boom! Yeah. That's how... Right here. Yeah, man. <laughs> and they probably going to say, look, he, I was scared when he running. Hey, you run and shoot. Yeah, man. <laughs> All hell breaking loose, man. And you see the Israelites in the last day in the midst of it, man, because we ain't scared, man. Right. We ain't scared, man. We ain't did nothing wrong, man. Man, where was we at? You had a great second part of this. All right, we're going to hold the victory of the battle. Let me check that out again. This is another piece. One am busting today, bud. Busting on each one today. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. And he said, The Lord is with you if you be with him. Right. But if you forsake the most high, Turn your ear from his law, statutes, and commandments. He said he's gonna forsake you, man. Right. And he said, when your fear comes in that desolation, what he said he's gonna do, he said he's gonna mock you and laugh at you, man. Right? So we gotta focus on getting the victory, man. And this ain't a victory. Boasting about how many times you got away from the police. That's not a victory. That's folly, man. Read that. We over here. Read that again. Second Edges, chapter 7. Verse 58, that if he become, he shall suffer, as thou hast said. But if he get the victory. But if he get what? But if, if he, he get, get the, the victory, victory he shall receive the king, the thing that I say. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived. Say, choose ye life, and thou mayest live. And he said, choose thee life, that thou mayest live. Right? I know you're um, going yeah. Is it more on it? Or go to 45? I mean, you can't read 60. All right, read, read. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. Hey, and that's what we out here, man. We see the same brothers. You know, sometimes we see different brothers, different sisters. 
you know, but nobody ever want to listen. And it's not that they don't want to listen to us. They don't want to listen to the Bible. Uh. It ain't no problem that y'all have with us. Y'all have a problem with the Bible, man. He said, they that despise of you, despise of me. And they that despise of me, despise of God, man. That's what Yahweh Shah said, man. It ain't, it ain't us that they don't like. It ain't us that they hate. They hate the Most High, man. So we is bringing the words of the Most High God to life. Let's pray. Jump to 45. God. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that has forgotten the victory. Hey, nobody is going to be able to do nothing with us once we get the victory. Right? Like when it, when we read um, Wisdom of Solomon um, chapter 3 earlier. And we moving as um, sparks that come off um, the spark. Like we moving with, with fact, give me um, Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel 1 and 12. Right? You ain't going to be able to do nothing with us once you have a shot. Give us that crowd, man. Right? We finna be moving fast as lightning. That's right what the brother said. We fishing right now. We fishing for the elect. We fishing for souls. We fishing for the men. And look, the Most High is using us to draw him to him. We gonna be fishers, and then after we fishers, we gonna be turned into hunters, man. God, and where you at? You ain't nailed? All right, yeah, hold that. I, I'm gonna get that one last. All right, get, get, um, yeah, get Ezekiel 1 and 12. <laughs> this is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 12. And they went every one straight forth. Hey, this is going into the angels. The men that got, that, that got them spiritual bodies, man. They tell you in um, Psalms 103 and 20 that the angels, they excel in strength. The angels excel in strength, man. Come on. God. Whither the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. Yeah, when they ran, they didn't They didn't look this way. They running, man. Like um, what they call them, flash. That's what you're going to literally see a spark. You're like, damn, what was that? Dead. Yeah, dead. You're going to be like, damn. I'm going to be dead, man. Go ahead. God. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. It says their appearance was like burning, burning curl, um, coals, of coals of fire. Now go to um, go to Wisdom of Solomon. <laughs> and I answered then and said, this is my first and last say. Now I want, um, I want to say, I want Wisdom of Solomon chapter oh. 3. Oh, oh, so I can uh, jump over here. This is Nahum chapter 2 and verse 4. The chariots shall rage in the streets. Come on. They shall jostle one against another in the broad way. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightning. It says they shall run like the lightnings, man. Hey, and when we get the victory, that's what you're going to be seeing. You're going to be seeing men, but then he's going to disappear like lightning. And then he's going to be right before your eyes. And you're going to have a, a dagger on your neck. That's what it's going to be like when we get the victory. It's going to be us bounding you in chains, man. That's what it's going to be like, man. Give me Psalms 1, um, 137. Go ahead. Though. What's my Solomon 3 and... 3 and... I want 3 and... 3 and 4. Three and four. This words of a Solomon, chapter 3. Verse 4. Right, check this out. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Hey, though we get punished in the sight of men, hey, men might look at the Israelites or being in the Bible um, a bad thing. Like, man, y'all can't even, you know, y'all can't have fun. You know, y'all can't, y'all can't smoke, y'all can't drink, y'all can't do this, you know, right? Y'all can't be in the world. That might look like something that's, you know, they like, damn, man, that's not fun, man. That's a... I hope, I hope I never get in the Bible. They look at it like it's a bad thing. Little do you know that being in the Bible is the best decision and the funnest thing. That's when I had the most fun, man, when I was uh, in the Bible, man. Uh. Being with my brothers, man. Right? As a unit. You think y'all gang members got units? Y'all think y'all really move as one? Man, you're going to find out that the Israelites doing doing it on a larger scale, man. Uh. We building up a nation, not just a block. Uh. You know what I mean? Keep reading though. It said, yet is their hope full of immortality, man. That's what we striving for, man. To get the victory, man. To get the crown. Come on. Verse 5. And having been a little chastened, 
Hold on, I gotta say something else. Yeah. And you know, you got all of these different blocks and these different sets, Con. Right. But at the end of the day, what do they get as a reward? Yeah. At the end of the day, what do you get? Nada. At the end of the day, as a blood, as a crit, being from 6-1, 5 trait, full deuce, right? Being all these things, at the end of the day, what do you gain? What do you get at the end of the day? Hey, the brother said a burden. At the end of the day, I say you get destroyed.